You are listening to Middle East Monitor Conversations, bringing you lively discussions with prominent voices from the region and beyond as we delve deeper into issues shaping the Middle East and North Africa, from politics to culture and the arts. Hello and welcome to this week's conversation with the Middle East Monitor. My name is Jesse Mahfed and I will be your host for today's discussion. In this week's conversation with Memo, we are discussing opposition to Zionism from within the Jewish community. And I'm pleased to have on the podcast the founders of the International Jewish Anti-Zionist Network, Michael Kalm- Kalmanovich and Sam Weinstein. Michael, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Okay, thank you for thank you, it's Kalmanovich. Kalmanovich. Thank you for joining us, Michael and Sam. Pleasure. So Michael is a, is a founding member of the International Jewish Anti-Zionist Network. Uh, yeah. We'll speak to him a bit about the history of the organization itself. And Sam, who is in the US, is a long-standing member of IJAN and a founding member of uh, Payday, an anti-racist and anti-imperialist network. Uh, so, real pleasure to have you both. Um, but as I said, Michael, if we can begin just to get your thoughts on, um, you know, the I- International Jewish Anti-Zionist Network, IGEN, um, uh, its primary objectives and when it was founded before we discuss your protests and your campaigns since 7 October. Sure. Um, so, IGEN for short. Uh, was founded in 2005 and uh, the basis of what who we are is that we are committed to struggles for human emancipation of which the Palestinian struggle is an absolutely essential part. So we are for um, the Palestinian resistance and we are against Zionism. That's in a nutshell. Um, When the organization, before the organization was formed, two of our sisters from the US went went around speaking with Palestinians, being explicit, we're Jewish, we're anti-Zionist, what do you want us to do? And they said, form a Jewish anti-Zionist organization. And that's what they did, and that's what we're part of. And it's very key to us that we, as Jewish people, are not the center of that organizing. Palestinian people are, and we'll take our leadership from the Palestinian struggle. In a nutshell, that's that's So, us. so that's interesting. I mean, do you want to add anything, Sam, um, in terms of uh, why you joined IGEN and um, the kind of projects uh, IGEN has been involved in since its founding? Uh, unmute. So, sorry, sorry, Sam. Can you unmute, please? My apologies. Yeah. I come from a long line, if I may put it that way, of fighters for social justice. Um, as you can see in in my bio, I spent most of my life as a union organizer, um, fighting for working people. Um, uh, etc. Um, and for me, that is the Jewish tradition. That's the Jewish tradition I come from. Um, and my mother uh, has always been a fighter for social justice. She fight to this day at, at the age of 93. She goes on most of the demonstrations in support of Palestine. Um, she is a fighter for money for carers um, and for anybody who does caring work, the vast majority of whom are women. Um, my father was a factory worker uh, who fought for justice where he worked. My grandfather um, was a founding member of a union in New York. And that is, to me, the Jewish tradition. Um, I, that has always been the, what it meant to me to be Jewish. Yeah, can yeah, I just add? 
Yeah, sure, a, Michael. A, a touchstone for us in IJAN is um, Marek Edelman, who was one of the leaders of the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. And he said, to be a Jew, you must be with the oppressed, never the oppressors. And that's a touchstone for us and for a lot of Jewish people, in fact, who are against what Israel is doing, against the genocide and for Palestinian liberation. And I should just add, you know, to be Jewish is, to me is to be opposed to genocide of any variety. We, we have experienced genocide and the saying in IJAN is uh, never again for anyone. And that includes the Palestinians. Yeah. So you, you did, both of you represent what has been a very strong current within Judaism, and but unfortunately over the last few decades uh, that current has been somewhat suppressed uh, and undermined. But I was wondering if you can elaborate on the, the actual history, historical context of Jewish opposition to Zionism. I wrote a piece last week looking at the alliance between um, the global far right and global Zionism, especially from the far right um, spectrum of Israeli politicians. And in that, I quoted Edwin Montague, who was um, a prominent British anti-Zionist member of the cabinet. And he described Zionism as being, and I quote, a mischievous political creed. Uh, so he, he was uh, part of a long tradition of critics of the Zionist movement. So, so how how strong was that current in the beginning, and then over the decades, how has that uh, um, aspect of anti-Zionist movement within the Jewish tradition been suppressed? Can you can you speak a bit about that? Just give us a historical context sure. of opposition to Zionism. Well, you know, Judaism is thousands of years old, and for almost all of those thousands of years, there was no Zionism. It, wasn't, it was a minority, it didn't exist. So it's relatively historically recently that it has come into play. Um, and as I understand it, begun first of all by Christian Zionists and then by Jewish Zionists more later on. But the, at this moment, because there is a genocide, there has been thousands and thousands of Jewish people demonstrating blocking bridges, uh, occupying train stations, surrounding the White House. We have a Jewish block here in, in London. So at this moment, there are so many more anti-Zionist Jews who are very visibly out on the street. Um, we, our history includes that during the 30s, when the Jewish world was boycotting Nazi Germany, the Zionists scabbed. They made a secret trade deal with the Nazis. And that's part of our history, that far from trying to defend, defend Jewish people from what became the Holocaust, they actually worked with the Nazis. We are horrified by that and and i think you you see that um within the current um in relations uh, as i mentioned um the israel's ministry for diaspora affairs he he gave a uh, full endorsement of Mary le pen uh, i think just over a week ago yes. against against the advice of jewish community leaders in France. So that, that again was another indication of how Zionism in its modern manifestation uh, is really closely aligned with uh, forces in the world which are That's essentially right. hostile to Jews. And there, there, is, there is now a divergence between the interests of the state of Israel, which uh, represents Zionism, you can say, and the interest of Jewish minority communities around the world do you do you is, is that correct do you see that playing out do you see that divergence becoming stronger and stronger but no. both michael and sam and if you want to address that uh, a few topic. years ago ijam produced a pamphlet called israel's worldwide role in repression and that spells out a number of things you can name 
a genocidist, a dictator, a death squad, and the chances are Israel has helped arm them. So we have uh, Israel arming the genocide in Rwanda, Israel arming um, the, the genocide against the Rohingya, minor, the Muslim minority Rohingya people, um, Israel arming the genocide of the Muslim minority in Srebrenica, that all these genocides and all these dictatorships and arming apartheid South Africa when it was still apartheid, Israel has played an, quite an enormous role on the world stage with the forces of repression. It's, no, it's not, I mean, genocide is their business. And their business is to practice their weapons on Palestinian people and then sell them abroad. They're tr trying to make themselves indispensable in some way or another. Hmm. So um, the issue... Go ahead. No, no, like if if you want to add anything, Sam. Uh, if not, then I mean, I, I, I was in because you guys have been very active since seven October. Yeah. Um, so just speak to us about your mobilization of members of your group and generally the response from anti-Zionist Jewish communities, not just here in in the UK but US and elsewhere since seven October. What kind of campaigns have you been doing uh, since then and well, here in London, we have focused on the Israeli ambassador, Zippy Hotevoli, and she has spoken in defense of genocide. She's literally said, oh, the coffee bombing of Germany during the war, 600,000 people killed. That's, that's fine. Or the, the bombing of Tokyo in the war, 100,000 people killed in one night. That's fine. She's agreed with the proposition to flatten the whole of Gaza. So we have taken a case. We've gone, we've submitted a case to the Metropolitan Police War Crimes Unit, asking them to investigate her for incitement to genocide. I'll tell you a bit more later. But we've also been outside of her house every week since October. The police response was to move us, to disallow us. So we've moved just outside the banning area, Swiss Cottage, and we're still there every week, every Friday, five to six. We have a, a good core of people who join us, not, not sort of Jewish by any means. We have a lot of Muslim people, especially women, join us. We have people from all kinds of sectors. We have people of color who join us. And we absolutely want to keep this going to put pressure. Our banner says expel. We want her expelled from this country. Um, and we, so we're also challenging the banning at this time. Um, and the policing, it's, the, it's, uh, until recently we were fine, but then the Zionists came. And they came in some numbers, they were very loud, they were very provocative, they were very threatening. And it seemed like the police were taking their side. So we've done a number of letters to the borough commanders, and in fact we met one of them yesterday. And it seems now that the police have got the message that what the Zionists are doing is provocation, it, this making false accusations against us, sticking cameras in our faces. All of this has to stop. And we're hoping from now on, the Zionists will be moved 30 meters away from us or across the road so that we continue with our protest. And our protest is not just a flag and banners, which we love, but also chanting, but also we speak. We have an open mic. It's our anti-racist open mic and people from the whole protest uh, can speak to the rest, give us news and updates and information. So this is what we're doing right now. And we're determined to keep going. As long as the bombing and the starvation is going, we will keep going. We will not stop. Uh, Sam, so what shape has 
the protests taken in the US. Uh, Michael has spoken about uh, focusing on the Israeli ambassador, uh, Zippy Hot Valley. Um, so what shape has the protests taken in the US from within the anti-Zionist uh, community in, in where you're from? Uh, unmute, unmute again, please, Sam, sorry. First, let me say I'm, I'm normally based in the UK. Um, okay. So my experience is generally there, but, and I did want to, to say though, um, that our name is the International Jewish Anti-Zionist Network and we are genuinely international. Um, so that we are in the UK, in the United States, in Argentina, uh, in Spain. Um, and there may be a couple of other countries that I'm, I'm not mentioning. But we are genuinely international, um, and that has been been very important. I also wanted to add to Michael's uh, comments about um, what's happening in the UK to, to, to note that we are often called upon, asked by people in other parts of the country to uh, send a speaker, and both Michael and I and others have done it from, from IJAN, have gone to other places in the country um, to tell them about IJAN and to make it clear that there is Jewish opposition to Zionism and the genocide and what is happening to the Palestinian people. And, and, and so we have made ourselves, put ourselves at the, um, you know, at, to, to be used by the movement generally um, in the UK and in the United States. And I should add, of course, in the United States, um, IJAN was very much involved, and, and uh, I was a long term, this is a while ago, but very much involved in blocking the boat, in the blocking the boat movement, where we stopped, yeah. uh, we and the Palestinians and the labor unions and so on, stopped the Zim shipping line from um, Dockey in uh, Oakland, California, right? And, and so that has been very much a, a, one of our focuses to make sure that these, uh, that BDS, Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions, takes place on every level, including, of course, on the arms industry. And I should say that one of the places that I certainly have spoken at, and I think Michael too, has been at some of the Elbit protests in, in, uh, in the UK, where we have supported Palestine action in all that they have been doing and also supporting others who have been going against um, uh, Elbit and all its um, subsidiaries and all of those who want to help support the support that the UK government is giving um, to the genocide that Israel is perpetrating. Um, at the moment, IJAN in the US is also very much involved in various of the sit-ins, including taking over uh, train stations, blocking freeways. And I always like to say this, when you block the, uh, the freeway between Oakland and San Francisco, what you get is the largest parking lot in the world. Um, and so IGEN has been taking its, working very closely with Palestinian groups and with others who want to fight against this genocide that's going on. Um, and we have also, of course, been supporting the student movement, which has been all over the country. I mean, it, it is incredible. The last figure I heard was that it happened. The, there was a student movement uh, with encampments and other kinds of protests um, at 1,100 different institutions across the country of the United States. So, I mean, we're not leading the movement. We're helping the movement and hopefully bringing it more and more together and making sure that there's a Jewish voice that's absolutely clear. We are opposed to Zionism. We are opposed to settler colonialism, which I should note, the UN has said is inherently, settler colonialism is inherently genocidal. And, and your voice is really, really crucial in this. Uh, which is why I wanted to ask you both about um, the manner in which governments, especially in the US, in the UK, in Germany as well, and elsewhere, are weaponizing anti-Semitism, saying that the laws they're passing in their countries is a response to the rise in anti-Semitism. Uh, so how do you feel about the fact 
that you know for many anti-semitism is being weaponized uh to defend israel and crack down on critics of israel but what are your thoughts on how anti-semitism is being used by not just israel and the pro-israeli support supporters of israel but also other governments um, like the UA, uh, US, like UK and Germany, who are seeking to adopt the really controversial International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance definition of anti-Semitism. Seven of the 11 examples of that, or, or within that definition, conflicts criticism of Israel with anti-Jewish racism. What, what are your thoughts on how the IHRA is being used and what are your fears that, you know, maybe this will be adopted and and silence people like yourself, Jewish, you know, critics of Israel and Zionism? Well, you know, the IHRA working definition is not going to stop us. And I wanted to mention, because Jewish opposition to Israel is, is, is important, and that we were founding members of the Stop the JNF campaign. And the JNF is the Jewish National Fund. And what the JNF do is steal Palestinian land. That's their focus. So there is an international campaign, it's not just the UK, it's the US and other countries as well. Um, so I wanted to mention that because that's an ongoing campaign. And I wanted to mention that there is an issue of what looks like Zionist infiltration into the anti-racist movement. So we've been in opposition to stand up to racism, who have their annual march in Glasgow every year, and they always refuse to stop Friends of Israel groups from being in the march. So there we are in an anti-racist march, and there's the Israeli flags. And we, and particularly Scottish PSC and other Muslim and Jewish groups, have been opposing this kind of infiltration into the movement. Okay. Sam, did you want to add anything to that? It is quite a, uh, an important issue. I, uh, I see how Aishare has gone from being um, something nobody ever heard of to becoming the mainstream dominant definition of anti-Semitism. And the spaces you and I operate in, that's threatening to our freedom of expression. It is. Uh, and especially now as there's a genocide going on in Gaza, for us not to be able to describe Israel exactly for what it really is, it's, it's quite threatening. So how do you feel about that, uh, Sam, uh, how the IHRA has been employed by supporters and advocates of Israel to crack down on criticism of uh, Israel and Zionism? Well, as I'm sure you are aware, um, the person who uh, created um, that thing, <laughs> um, has himself said that it is being misused. That was not his intent. Um, it was not supposed to be uh, a definition of anti-Semitism. Um, and of course, they want to shut us up. Um, and they have used it. Um, they, ha they, ha they have tried to spread it as far and wide as they possibly can. But it is very difficult, unless you're a Labour Party official, it's very difficult to accuse Jews on a large level of being anti-Semitic, which is what they have attempted to do. Um, I have been called a, 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 a capo in, in various places. Um, frankly, uh, the people who are putting Jews at risk um, are in fact the Zionists, who, as as you note in in one of your questions, um, have in have in fact aligned themselves with the most right wing elements in the world. Um, mm -hmm. We sometimes see on the picket. Um, we sometimes see uh, UK flags uh, intermingled with the. Um, Israeli flag in the opposition to the picket, um, and we assume that those people are just straight out fascists from the English Defense League or some similar organization. And we have definitely seen um, 
the tremendous support in the United States, for instance, of Zionists, Jewish and otherwise, um, for Trump. Uh, and Trump has been anti-Semitic as hell, and many of his supporters have been anti-Semitic as hell. And, and so the, the IHRA um, is just another way of them spreading um, that poison and of trying to shut us up. We have no intention of being shut up. We will not stop talking while there's a, zen uh, a genocide going on. We will not, and until the Palestinian people are fully liberated. And to, can I just sure. add, because we've both had experience of the Labour Party, <clears throat> and the fact is that if you're Jewish and support Palestine, and you're in the Labour Party, you are ten times more likely to be expelled than if you're not Jewish. So we can say quite clearly that Starmer is not only racist against Palestinian people, but anti-Semitic as well. So we have little faith that Labour will be any better than the Tories. They're, as far as I can see, continuing to arm Israel. They're continuing to um, have flights from the British base in Cyprus to Tel Aviv. But we, that was going to be my next question about, about are you optimistic about the new Labour government? You guys have been quite closely involved. Uh, it seems like you're clearly not. But, but I mean, what does Starmer, what is Starmer trying to do then when he says, for example, he would recognise the Palestinian state? Do you think he's trying to claw his way back and having realized that the party has shifted so far to the right, um, you know, appearing to even supporting genocide at the beginning with the statements he made at LBC. That's right. Do you, do you think he's trying to now row himself back? Um, or is that almost impossible now, given um, the kind of people he's surrounded himself with and given the type of donors there are in Labour? That's right. So do you think it's even possible that Labour will be able to uh, take on a different course uh, in its approach to Israel and Palestine than the Tory government? Well, you know, I mean, Starmer is a Zionist, and as we know, Zionists lie all the time. So we've seen Starmer make these pledges and that pledges and then drop them very quickly. So he's pledged to recognise the Palestinian state. We'll see, and we'll see what it means. But the fact is, he began by agreeing with Yoav Gallant, the Israeli defense minister, that it was absolutely fine to stop all food, water, and power coming into Gaza. That's genocidal. I don't see how he could ever row back from that. So, the, the point is, that there is now a huge Palestine movement all over the world, in the UK, and it's got some some weight, and you could see from the election results that a lot of people would, did not vote Labour, and part of that reasoning was that Labour was on the side of the destruction of Gaza. I think he's pragmatic. He may have to do something about that if he wants to keep even a portion of the popular vote. That's right. I mean... Labour has a huge challenge on this end. Uh, and we were involved in Andrew Feinstein's campaign here in Hoban and St Pancras, and Andrew was standing against Starmer and got a huge, several, many thousands, and many, seven, eight thousand. Starmer's vote was cut in half. Incredible. No, no future prime minister has lost so much of the vote in his own constituency. So that was really, a, really an expression of the Palestinian movement, the anti-genocide movement, and those of us who really want to make a change in the world. Let's we'll end with this final question to you both, Michael, and um, yeah, to you both about um, the general shift that's taking place within the within Jewish communities. Of course, Jewish co Jewish communities aren't one monolithic block; they're all different. Uh, I, I'm not really um familiar with some of the changes that are happening 
what's been the major shift since 7 October? One thing you hear from analysts and experts like, for example, Ilan Pepe, I'm sure you've been to some, some of his lectures. He, he's, he views the current situation as the beginning of the end of Zionism. Mm -hmm. uh, every ethno-nationalist state has baked within it, you know, genocide. Genocide is, is a possibility in every major, every ethno-nationalist project. And yeah. we are now at a phase where genocide is the natural logical conclusion of what Zionism, in the eyes of many, it, it, it has, has already, uh, was already um, going to uh, create in Palestine. So that being the case, are Jewish communities or new generation, I'm more interested to hear about the new generation, younger uh, Jewish members, uh, are they looking at Zionism in the way you have see as a um, and view it as a racist ideology um, that is causing the genocide of the Palestinians? Is that a growing um, sentiment within younger generations uh, of uh, the Jewish community? Yes. Just to be both before we finish. I think we can see that most clearly in the US where the student generation, the younger people, are moving away from Zionism hugely. I mean, there's probably a bigger proportion of Jewish students who are now anti-Zionist than fizzle than ever before, but probably more than who are Zionist. I think that's a huge change, and that's reflected, I think, amongst young Jewish people generally. I don't have the fingers for here, but some years ago, when the question was asked to to the Jewish communities in, in large, something like 40% of Jewish people said they were not Zionist. So the proportion of not Zionists is very substantial. And that can only grow because the situation now is you're either for genocide or you're against it. There's no shades of gray in this. And I think that's made a huge difference. It's so clear that Zionism is murder, Zionism is killing mothers and babies. We can't stand for that. I think that's a general view. Sam, what's been your experience with this? No, I, I absolutely agree with what Michael just said. I just, just to add, you know, um, we have to keep in mind that that is the Jewish tradition, especially here in the United States, but I think all over the world. Jews have traditionally been oppressed all over the world, and their response has been opposition to oppression generally. Um, and, and that is who we are and who we expect to be. And I am delighted to see that a new generation is coming up and coming back to that tradition. It has been undermined to some degree by what the Zionists have done, but they're losing that battle now. The Israeli state is losing that battle. Everybody can look at Netanyahu they see him as perpetrating genocide. They see Israel as, as doing that. And they see the U.S. government and the U.K. government uh, and various European governments as supporting those genocidal um, tendencies. And they are opposed to that because they fight it. They fight against racism, against black and brown people. They fight for women's rights. How can they not support the Palestinians? It is an absolute contradiction to not support the Palestinians, and more and more young people and Jews generally are coming back to that Jewish tradition. Can, can I just give a, a shout out to South Africa? Sure. Because they've made such great legal inroads to put Israel on, in the dock for its genocide. They, they had this extraordinary experience of apartheid and we remember Archbishop Bishop Archbishop Tutu saying that apartheid in Israel was worse than it was in South Africa. And now they've come out with the Johannesburg Declaration, which calls Israel's genocide very particularly a reproductive genocide, a genocide against mothers and children. And I think that is so important that we remember that they're literally trying to kill the next generation. I, I can't tell you how it, what Israel is doing has been the most 
awful thing that has happened in our lifetimes. And people are responding to that. They know it is. And we are absolutely going to win. Thanks. Which is why voices like yourself, uh, voices from the International Jewish Anti-Zionist Network is more important than ever before. Uh, which is why I wanted to give you both a chance to speak with us and then more conversation. So thank you, Michael, and thank you, Sam, for uh, joining us, giving us your time. And thank you for tuning in for another for, for conversation with the Middle East Monitor and hope to see you again for another uh, podcast next week. So see you. Take care. Bye bye. This was Middle East Monitor Conversations brought to you by the Middle East Monitor in London. 